Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Well, President Obama has told Politico that he's energized. He's not depressed. And he should be energized. No one has ever destroyed the sovereignty of the United States of America like President Barack Hussein Obama. And you've got all his different foils going on. Oh, the, the, the open border advocates are mad at him. They're demonstrating. They're, they're filing lawsuits. He didn't open the borders up enough. He didn't legalize enough people. He didn't do an executive order legalizing everybody. That's because he's already done it outside of an executive order. And within that is the whole shill. So the people go, oh, immigration reform didn't happen yet. As if it's immigration reform to get rid of our borders, rid of our sovereignty, and give the political class an unlimited third world population to be a political army who will vote as they're told to vote because they're given welfare and other goodies. And Senator Sessions has come out and basically said the Democrats are all part of this executive takeover and are complicit and that the executive takeover has already happened. Thank God for Senator Sessions. Three times with George W. Bush. I remember covering it right here on air. Right here on this Sunday broadcast. He would leak the, quote, secret bill. Because you're not supposed to have a bill. Just trust us, it's not amnesty. And the Republican leadership wanted it. And now he says Senate Dems are willing accomplices in Obama's lawless executive amnesty. Yeah, he's doing it outside of an executive order and then saying, I'm not going to act yet, when in January they ordered the Border Patrol to basically stop apprehending anybody. I mean, come on, folks. You pay taxes for the welfare system, and then you're going to say that unlimited people can come here and get everything for free. And I'm not on some jihad, on some crusade against people from Latin America. It's just that the political class in this country is a bunch of lawyers and bankers that want to bankrupt the country as fast as they can to bring it into receivership and then reside over that collapse and then use the unlimited third world hordes as the global meltdown accelerates, as the political mercenaries or Hessians to come in and take over the nation. You know, I'm German, I'm Alsatian. I got a lot of German on both sides of my family. My mom's pretty much German. I'm not against Germans, but I was against tens of thousands of German troops, Hessian troops, Bavarian troops, brought here in 1776 to fight the colonies. Just like I'm not against the German people, I'm against Hitler. I'm against the political plan. Just like I'm not against Latin Americans, I wish they were free and rich and I wish there was places nicer than the U.S. down there. I'd be living down there. I'm not afraid of brown people. I'm afraid of what's going on inside their heads. I'm afraid of the globalists wanting to bring them here to carry out their political plan. See, I've said this a thousand times. I'll say it again. The New World Order's for gun control. I'm against it. I have a lot of intellectual reasons, but the globalists are bad people. They have bad will. They're enslavers. I'm default against anything they're for. They're for banker bailouts. I'm against it. They're for devaluing the dollar. I'm against it. They're for launching all these new wars and funding Al-Qaeda. I'm against it. They are for satellite tracker boxes and all the cars attached by the mile. I'm against it. Basically, anything they're for, I'm against it. But I watch these little tricks about it. Yeah, Obama's getting protested by the illegals. You want to buy La Raza and Mecha and everybody because he didn't legalize everybody? He did. He already did. By fiat. 
So see how they play these mind games? I'm sick of it. Another Harvard lawyer running a scam. I see through it. 2014. We are live right now at 4.08 and 7 seconds Central Standard Time broadcasting worldwide on AM and FM affiliates across the United States, global shortwave satellite, the internet at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us today. How does the tale of two cities begin? That classic novel. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I've probably begun over the last 20 years of being on air. It's now 20 years. 20 years next month. In the last 20 years that I've been on air. Since October. So long ago. I've said many times. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. So when I talk about all these terrible things that are happening, it's so that we can have a debate about it and try to change what's bad and promote what's good. Any culture that sweeps things under the rug will rot from the head down very, very quickly. Now, I have a lot of geopolitical news on the economy, on ISIS, on what's happening uh, to the Second Amendment. There's just a lot of important news Immigration, it's all coming up today. That's why I broadcast six days a week, because so much is happening on the weekend. I like to get a jump on the news Sunday evenings. Then we're back weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. But when I talk about the best of times, worst of times, there is so much incredible goodness in this world. So many positive things. So many good people in the private sector and government and in universities and in the whole culture. Farmers, ranchers, auto mechanics, school teachers. It doesn't matter. Individually, there's a lot of beautiful people. But when we look at so many of the special interests that reside at the top of the pyramid... They want to secure their gains, much of which was gotten through government contracts and insider crony capitalist deals, that they want to bring in socialism for the grassroots to suppress us in a domesticated quagmire, where we're dependent on them like fish in a tank to be fed and to be taken care of. Well, I don't want to live like an animal. I want to control my own destiny. I want my children to be able to be free thinkers and worship what gods or not they will. The so-called atheists, those that promote the state, they want to be God. They want to be in charge. And I'm here to tell you, I am for separation of church and state. In this deceived world, we're taught by the authoritarians that call themselves liberals the separation of church and state means the government runs the churches and you can't tell people about Jesus Christ at a public school at lunch if you're a student. But they can tell you all day long about any other God or culture or Harry Potter that they see fit. When in truth, separation of church and state means Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion and prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It means government centrally has no jurisdiction. It's as if they're blind. It's not their world. It's not their sector. It's not their prerogative to even have an opinion or to open their mouths. Instead, we have state-run religion under 501c3 in this country. And when I try to go to Baptist churches in town, they'll have little handouts. I've showed them on air where they say, even when you go to this picnic, don't discuss politics personally. There is no law. There is no regulation. There is only the intimidation of the central government and the fact that we now, to a great extent, have a state-run church in this country and state-run media. But our money that's supposed to be run by Congress is run by a private bank that calls itself the Federal Reserve. What a joke. 
and they teach in public schools. Two plus two equals five under Common Core. We're living in a Twilight Zone episode. So there's a lot I'm going to cover today, but I'm going to break down coming up in the second hour today something of such massive import that if the public ever knew what I knew, if the public ever knew what Dr. Andrew Wakefield knew, if the public ever knew and ever saw the documents that we're going to present and ever cared, it would cause a chain reaction that would bring this whole system down. Do you care that from 1946 until the late 1970s, there was a secret program to inject black people with syphilis? Do you care there was a program from the 1950s to 1990s to nerve gas U.S. troops until they died and tell their families they died of the flu? It's called Project Shad. See, because if the technocracy that runs things did that in thousands of different studies and tests that the general public's not aware of, the general public's only aware of a few of the more famous ones, what does it say about the people behind the curtain where presidents come and go, bureaucracy stay? What makes this world tick? What is the governing philosophy of the ruling class? I know what it is. I've read their books. I've read their writings. They think you're so stupid, they publish it all in eco-science and a thousand other tomes about their dream that makes Hitler 